This is All India Radio. In the program Insights, now we bring you a discussion on National Quantum Mission. The participants are Professor Bhaskar Kanseri of Department of Physics, IIT Delhi and Om Vejupadhyay, AIR Correspondent. The Indian government yesterday on 19th of April greenlit the National Quantum Mission to elevate quantum technology research and development for scientific and industrial purposes. The mission has been allocated 6,000 crore rupees for the period between year 2023 to 2030. India will have its own quantum mission, making it the sixth country to do so after the United States, Austria, Finland, France and China. This mission is a promise to build a reliable class of computers that work several times faster than the speediest machine of today and also facilitate exponentially secure communication network and its wide application. And today to discuss on this in detail, we are joined by Professor Bhaskar Kanseri from IIT Delhi. Welcome to the program, Professor Bhaskar. Thank you. And now, Professor Bhaskar, to begin the conversation, I would like you to explain to our listeners in a very simpler terms, what is quantum technology? So, when we talk about quantum technology, we are essentially talking about these technologies which are working on the principles of quantum mechanics. So, quantum mechanics essentially deals with the physics of subatomic particles or elementary particles such as photon, proton, electron, neutron. So, any those technologies which are basically using the traits of these subatomic particles are called quantum technologies. So, we have several such technologies which are being developed all over the globe. For example, quantum computers, which are expected to be in computational capabilities, several orders of magnitude higher than the classical computers which we have today. We have communication where we can essentially talk about unconditional security while we are sending or receiving information. Here are quantum sensors which are being developed. People are trying to use quantum technologies for measurement where one is expecting way higher sensitivity and resolution compared with the classical measurement. Also, people are trying to make quantum materials or novel materials which are ICD conductors or topological materials for making devices. So these all are in the framework of quantum technology. And to take forward the discussion, Professor Bhaskar, what is the national quantum mission that we are hearing the news about and what will be the areas of research and development under this mission? As I will be, go through some background of that. So essentially, as you know, that every country now is trying to understand the potential of quantum technology. And they are trying to do it themselves indigenously by developing their own quantum devices or quantum technology-based devices. So India also in that direction basically took the first step roughly three, four years back when the Department of Science and Technology came up with a program called a Quantum Enabled Science and Technology, which is called in short form Quest. And the idea is to map the experience to people all over the India who are already working in the area of quantum science and technology. So roughly 50-52 projects have been granted and now they are almost completing their first phase. So now when they understood that uh, there is already capability in India, then in order to make a proper ecosystem so that one can develop quantum technologies indigenously, they come up with this mission which we call the National Quantum Mission. So here the goal essentially is to scaling up scientific and industrial research and development and to make an innovation-based ecosystem on quantum technologies all over the India. So this is the main goal for which almost 6,000 crore rupees has been allotted basically. And the goal is in the next eight years, one can come up with uh, some of the key devices with a proper understanding, with proper research and development in those areas. One could have, for example, quantum computers, also come up with a long distance quantum communication, which can be of the order of 2,000 kilometers, either using fiber or using satellite, making quantum networks so that one can safely communicate to make a precision timing and synchronization based navigation devices based on quantum technology and also to come up with novel quantum devices using quantum material. So essentially the goal is to making this ecosystem or a supply chain where everything is connected with the other. For example, one requires to make a quantum communication system, then there should be a trained manpower which could come up in next eight years' time 
there could be raw materials required detectors required sources required cryogenic systems required software required so everything is a part of that ecosystem which will be built in next 7 to 8 years in order to support on those quantum technology so this is the basic goal behind that so then professor bhaskar can we also say that this mission can also have the potential to affect and impact the lives of common people directly yeah 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 so the whole idea is to have a societal impact which is way larger than what we have currently with classical technology one is going to have a complete paradigm shift on the existing ways the way we are doing now so quantum technologies have that potential to do that paradigm shift if uh, i talk about the application in computing as i mentioned that the computers should be having computational capabilities way larger than the classical computers in fact orders of magnitude so all the data analysis problem which are currently there which require probably years of analysis would be within fraction of minutes or seconds so if i take an example of covid 19 we had so much data available from which we can speak about the epidemic that how it will behave what should be the way we could see it and we should try to restrict it so if you get quantum computer probably that analysis would be done in fraction of second so it will actually help it will be the welfare of many people who could otherwise be infected by the disease there could be medicines new device can come up by making a proper simulation based on the protein structures or the interaction mechanism of medicines one can look into many options like uh, we have traffic optimization or optimization of the interaction so everything can be done in a very very smaller time scale by using quantum computer i would also mention here that uh, the disaster management like we have completely unpredictable type of weather nowadays so we require basically to analyze a large set of data to predict about what will happen in next few uh, days or next few months so with quantum computers one can do it in a very very faster manner communication is the other area where you can have very very safe communication secure communication using quantum communication tool and you uh, can make communication so strong that uh, no one can basically hack it similarly sensors and other devices all will be giving much sensitive information or much precise information about the interaction would be provided and available with common man so basically whatever the way we live everything is going to be transformed in a very large way by using the quantum technology absolutely so professor bhaskar you talked about the quantum computers can you please for our listeners information share how the quantum technology computers especially particularly work so i would like to give it a very simple way so we know that classically if we have a calculation we use bit that is a bit has a information which is sometimes one sometimes two so this is two states we have so if we have n bits we have two raised to power n states but classically a system can be only in one state at a time so if we have n bits we can have only one state out of two raised to power n possibilities a quantum system or a quantum computer has a property which is called quantum superposition superposition is a property where a quantum system can simultaneously stay with several of its three states so basically it can have all possible states which are there with the number of qubits available so if there are n qubits all to the power n states a system can stay and work so this is a computational capability is very very large we are working with qubits for n possibility at a time and with many other quantum traits such as quantum entanglement and a quantum interference we can basically do computation way faster than a classical computer so the larger the number of qubits available for quantum computing exponentially more basically power we have to analyze so that way the quantum computer would be way faster in computation compared with a classical computer and then through that uh, professor bhaskar can we expect that through the national quantum mission when now government is specially focusing on working in the quantum technology field can we say that researchers in india will have a whole new horizon of opportunities and how does the national quantum mission will position india in the global quantum technology landscape yeah so as i mentioned that uh, the goal is to make a ecosystem ecosystem means we have not only the quantum technologies but all enabling technologies all inspiring technologies everything would be there in that ecosystem so all this will be under the mission the quantum mission so as i mentioned that in case of quantum 
computer, the expectation is to have 1000 qubit kind of computers. Similarly, for communication, long distance communication, they are expecting. So, there is a whole lot of opportunity for young researchers to do with development in the areas. Essentially, these quantum technologies are not yet fully understood. Even the potential of quantum science and technology is not fully understood and one needs to go through it to learn about that over the years with the support which is government providing to us. And that way one can develop the kind of systems which can be very much useful for all the common people. I would here also like to mention that uh, there are many, many government missions which are going in parallel and this particular mission would be actually resonating with them. For example, if you look into digital India, everything is online nowadays. There are online transactions, but how to secure those transactions? So the way to secure those transactions will come from quantum communication essentially. Similarly, there is Make in India program. So for this quantum technology mission, we require a lot of infrastructure support. All that would be possible with this Make in India or this startup agency kind of support where people will come with innovative ideas. They will develop those ideas, develop those systems, and finally, which will lead to developing new quantum technology. So, Professor Bhaskar, you slightly talked about how quantum technology can transform the realm of communication sector. I want to get a more insight from you on this in very detail that whenever you talk about the communication sector, be it the mobile devices, be it the satellite communication that we have, in both the realms, uh, quantum technology can create a huge impact and especially when we now have a national quantum mission. Yeah, yeah. So, as I mentioned that uh, one of the areas where quantum technology is developed would be quantum communication. Classically, if you look into, if you want to communicate safely, we need to have the same key by which we encrypt the data so that the distribution could be easier. We can have many types of secret uh, data which can be either for some secret mission or especially for uh, credit card transactions, bank transactions, health database of many, many hospitals. All these are very crucial data. And in order to safeguard that data, we need to use some encryption mechanism. Classically, whatever is being done as of now is mainly public key cryptography, which we call. And uh, it is based on the computationally hard problems, which a classical computer would take years to solve. However, as I mentioned, we can have very, very fast computers using the quantum technologies and in that situation, all these keys can be broken very, very easily. So, to safeguard this kind of thing, one has to use, again, quantum principles, which we call quantum cryptography, which is a part of quantum communication. And in that cryptography, essentially, one uses quantum carriers, such as photons, they are property, and with that, one can share the photons from one user to the other user. And as I mentioned, the quantum principles essentially tell us no cloning of this photon. So one cannot clone a photon. That means if anyone wants to detect in between the property or wants to steal the information or is to drop in between, it is not possible because the information is already lost. So that way, the information or any attempt of is dropping in between will alert the user and they will actually discard that particular case and will start again with the new set of data. So what essentially we mean to say is that the security is no longer dependent on the computational capabilities of the system. And that way one can provide unconditional security, at least theoretically, by using these kind of system. Now, as I mentioned earlier also, that in order to go for two cities in between, one can use fiber-based communication. So the idea is that if we can have longer and longer channels, like maybe 1,000 kilometers or 2,000 kilometers or so, then we can cover up the whole India. Absolutely, sir. Thank you so much for joining us today on All India Radio. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on National Quantum Mission. The participants were Professor Bhaskar Kanseri of Department of Physics, IIT Delhi and Omvesh Upadhyay, AIR Correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on a mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on a YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsdtalks at gmail.com or WhatsApp on 92890940.